Systems of nonlinear equations. I told you about this last week uh, on Friday. When we have a system of equations, linear equations, we're finding where the two lines intersect. Okay. Now we've just got a system of any kind of equation, and we got to find where what the, what it, where the intersections are. Okay. So what we should recognize about those two equations that are on the board: the first one is the graph of a circle, right? It's got a one x squared, a one y squared, so that would be the graph of a circle. The second one is just a graph of a line. So we're talking about where this line and circle are going to intersect. I know options for that. I could have two intersections. I could have one intersection. Or I could have no intersections. Okay? So that's what we're dealing with. Where does that line intersect the circle in? Okay, there's going to be different methods for doing these. When we did lines a long time ago, systems of linear equations, my favorite method was always elimination. Only time I'm going to be able to do elimination on something like this is when I've got a, a variable that's squared top and bottom. Like I've got x squared on top, but I've just got x to the first on bottom. That's no good for elimination. i got y squared on top, but i just got y to the first on bottom. That's no good for elimination. So I'm not going to be look at elimination. The next favorite method of everybody is substitution. That's what we're going to have to do on this. We're going to solve one of those equations for a variable and substitute it in the other one. Okay. So on the, I would solve the linear one so you don't got to mess with squares. So I would solve that second one. So you just got to look at this and say, well, do you want to get the x all by itself or the y all by itself? It's about the same work on either one. Doesn't really matter. Might be a smidge less work on the y, possibly, but it's about the same. So, all right, if we get the y by itself, is that okay with everybody? Now, normally I would subtract the 2x. If I do that, that's going to make my y be negative. So, I'm going to go ahead and just add the y first, keep my y positive. So, it's going to give me 2x equals y plus 3. Now, I'm trying to get the y by itself, just subtract that 3. So y is 2x minus 3. Okay, we just solved that for y. You could have done that, you know, subtracted the 2x and then divided by negative 1. That would have worked. Still get the same thing. All right, so if this is what y is, I'm going to take what y is, and we're going to go and substitute it in there for the y. Okay, so we're going to have x squared plus, instead of y, I put what y is, 2x minus 3 squared is equal to 9. Are you okay there? <coughs> now where we've got that whole binomial being squared, what does that mean we need to do? Foil right twice foil it. So that's going to be x squared plus, do my foil over here on the side in case y'all don't trust my middle math. Although I'm pretty good at middle math. 4x squared minus 6x and minus 6x is minus 12x plus 9. Okay, we got some like terms right off the bat. An x squared and a 4x squared gives us a 5x squared minus 12x. This is a quadratic. What's one of the major things we always have to do when we're solving a quadratic? <coughs> Bailey said it equal to 0, so when I subtract that 9, 9 minus 9, it goes away on both spots. So I just got 5x <coughs> squared minus 12x is equal to 0. You could put the plus zero there if you were wanting to do quadratic formula and, and needed to see your C, but I don't really need it there. What I'm going to do now to solve this, I'm going to actually factor it, but it's it's an easy factor. You should notice here on the left, since we don't have a constant, these have an X in common, right? So we can take that X out, leave me with 5X minus 12 equals zero. Now, even though those are not both binomials, you're going to do it the same way. 
set both of those factors equal to zero and solve. Well, this is an easy one. X equals zero. Nothing to do on that. Right? Then your binomial, 5X minus 12 equals zero. Add your 12. 5x is 12, divide by 5, get a fraction there, x is 12 fifths. Alright, we're almost done. Remember we were trying to find places where the line intersected the circle. I've got two x's. They're going to intersect in an ordered pair, an x comma y. So i got to take both my x's, go plug them back in somewhere to find a y. Okay, ready? We'll scroll back up here and look for a good place to plug X's in and solve for Y. I would say, in my opinion, the easiest place would be right there. Because that one's already got the Y all by itself. So I'm going to use Y equals 2X minus 3 to solve these. So Y equals 2 times 0 minus 3. Times 0 is 0. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. So there's one ordered pair when x was 0, y was negative 3. Now I've got to plug my 12 fifths in. y equals 2 times 12 fifths minus 3. Oh, parentheses in the wrong spots there. That's 24 fifths. Get times 2 to 12, 24 fifths minus 15 fifths is nine-fifths, is that right? So we would have 12 fifths and nine-fifths. You can check my fractions out on the calculator there if you need to, but I just looked in the book and that is right. Alright, so this would be, I showed you the three scenarios of where all the line could intersect a circle. This one intersected it twice, and it would be at zero, negative three, and 12 fifths, 9 fifths. So those are your two answers. Now the previous, remember this is a short unit here with these circles and ellipses and hyperbolas and all this. The previous two deals, units, lessons have just been graphing them. So this one's the, the one lesson of the three that actually involves some figuring and computation and algebra because it wasn't just graphing. We had to algebraically get there and do that. Alright, everybody good on that one? Okay, this one I got says 6x minus y equals 5 and xy equals 4. Alright, so same deal on this. I, I like elimination, but there's nothing I can't eliminate. Those x's don't line up and the y's don't line up. On the top you've got subtraction, on the bottom you've got multiplication, so I'm not going to be able to use elimination. So I am going to do substitution. It's easier when you have one that's being multiplied like that one on the bottom. If you solve it for a variable, it's easier to substitute that in. So let's solve this one. doesn't matter which one. Let's solve it for x. That way I don't have to worry about that negative when I plug it in up there. So to solve that for x, I would divide both sides by y. So it would look like that. Now if you wanted to solve it for y, it's okay. It'd work. But I just chose x. Alright, so if that's what x is, we have to plug it in the x spot. That's what our initial substitution step would look like, which makes 24 over y minus y equal 5. 6 times 4 is 24. Alright, now we've got a dilemma. we got a fraction involved here. I can multiply this entire equation by something to get rid of that fraction. Very good, Bailey. It's a y on bottom, so I'm going to multiply the whole thing by y. So here the y's will cancel out. I've just got 24. Here that would be y times y, so that's y squared. And then equals 5y. Alright, so we got a quadratic. So we're going to set it equal to 0. You can move whatever stuff over you want to. 
I'm going to move this left stuff over because I'm going to. I like my y's, my square to be positive, and that's going to help me see how easy this one is to factor if I move that stuff over. So I'm going to have y squared plus 5y minus 24 is equal to zero. Okay, you can do quadratic formula here. This is an easy one to factor. Factors of negative 24 that add to 5 are positive 8 and negative 3. Set both of those equal to 0 and solve. y plus 8 equals 0 means y is negative 8. And y minus 3 equals 0 means y is 3. Now the first problem that we did when we got here, those were x's. Now they're y's, so in your ordered pair, it's going to be something comma negative 8, don't put them in the wrong spot, and something comma 3. And we've got to find somewhere good to plug y's in now. So go back and look at your stuff you got up there. This one right here is already solved for x, isn't it? x equals 4 over y, so that's what I'm going to use. So I have x equals 4 over negative 8, which will give me a negative half. And then I'll have x equals 4 over 3, which is just 4 thirds. And I plug my two y answers in there. So that's your ordered pairs. there. This one has got x squared plus y squared equals 9. I think we used that circle a minute ago. And then 2x squared minus y squared equals negative 6. Alright, the, the first two that we've done I've used substitution on and it's easy to solve for a variable when there's no squared involved. I notice here that everything has a squared involved, and yeah, I know I can undo a square by square rooting, but I don't want a big radical to mess with all the time. Since I have squared on top and bottom, this is a time when you can do elimination. See, I can look here, I say I got an x squared and 2x squared, I can eliminate those. I got a y squared and negative y squared, I can eliminate those. The y's would give me less work because they both are a 1. If I wanted to do the x's, I could. I would just have to multiply this equation by 2 to make them the same. But the y's are already the same. So I'm going to eliminate the y's. Since they're opposite signs, different signs, do I need to add or subtract to get rid of them? Add is correct the mundo. Good job. 1x squared plus 2x squared is 3x squared. y squared and negative <laughs> y squared is nothing. 9 and negative 6 is 3. Divide by 3. X squared is 1. How do you undo a square root? Square root. And don't forget when you square root, the square root of 1 is 1. We know that, but it can be positive, positive or negative. So we got two possibilities there. I hope she's right. I just hope we don't grab all the way over there. Be over, but I, it says it's, they backed it up. Well, I hope so. it is. Did you say it would take 30 minutes? Mm -hmm. It shouldn't take that long. She said we average 15 errors a game. That's nice. That's nice. All right. When we plug a 1 in now, we got to plug a positive 1 in and a negative 1. So it's going to be a 1. This is x, so I'll put it in the first place, and a negative 1. All right, when we plug a 1 in, you'll see something weird happen on this. You can plug a 1 in. We didn't, like, simplify one of the equations, so there's no better one. I'm just going to plug it in that first one. So I'm going to have 1 squared plus y squared equals 9. Subtract my 1. y squared equals 8. 
I'm doing my square by square rooting. So y when I square root is positive or negative, square root of 8. 8 can be broken down because it has 4 in it. That's the same as 4 times 2. And the square root of 4 is 2. So this will be positive or negative 2 square roots of 2. Okay, so when we plug the 1 in for the x, we got two y's out because the square root can be positive or negative. So up here where I was writing my answer, 1 got me a positive 2 square root of 2, and 1 also got me a negative 2 square root of 2. So I'm probably fixing to have four answers on this thing. <laughs> All right, now let's plug the negative one in. That was funny. I'm going to plug the negative 1 in. Don't forget, it's x squared, so negative 1 squared. Well, that's going to be the same thing, isn't it? Negative 1 squared is positive 1. So you're going to get the same thing here. Do I need to show all that work again, or are you with the same thing? That, so i got negative 1 gets me a positive 2 square roots of 2, and negative 1 gets me a negative 2 square roots of 2. So we had all those four answers. What does that look like when something intersects in four places? What kind of graphs do we have here? We, we already knew that one was a circle. We had it earlier. What's this thing? It's got a minus sign. What did we do Friday that had a minus sign? No? Friday. Started with H. Hyperbola. So if we're talking about a hyperbola in a circle intersecting four times, there's my hyperbola. So there you see one, two, three, four. So that would be kind of what the picture would look like. Yeah, baseball where the seams fit off the Yeah. All right, we've got one more we've got to look at where we have to do some elimination and substitution both. We've done substitution. We've done elimination, now we're going to put them together. It says x squared plus 2xy minus y squared equals 7. Then we've got x squared minus y squared equals 3. Alright. We hadn't graphed anything that quite looks like number one yet, but we know that the second one is a hyperbola. And the first one actually is a hyperbola also. We just haven't graphed anything that looks like that. So if you're talking about two hyperbola that are intersecting, they could never intersect, or one, two, three, or four times. So we could have up to four answers again on this. I do have multiple uh, squareds. I've got x squared and x squared and i got y squared and y squared. So we're going to start off with elimination. Now it would have helped me out so I'm going to fix this real quick. You don't have magic as good as I do. I'm going to move this x squared over there underneath the other x squared. Okay. Now I get ready to eliminate here. x squareds are same signs. y squareds are same signs. So I am going to subtract, very good, Miss Bailey, x squared minus x squared is nothing, 2xy minus nothing, so I'll just bring down 2xy, negative y squared minus negative y squared is also nothing, and then 7 minus 3 is 4. So we got rid of all those squares there, but we don't have just one variable, okay? So we need to solve this new equation for a variable. Like, I don't know which, you know, solve it for which one? Okay. X, so to solve it for X, it's being multiplied by 2 and a Y. So I'm going to divide by 2 and a Y. So that would leave me with X equals 2 over Y. Okay, so if that's what X is, now I'm going to take that back to one of my original equations and plug it in. Which one of these original equations had I better use? The bottom one, because it doesn't have that whole middle piece. Good job. So I'm going to take 2 over y and plug it in there. So I've got 2 over y squared minus y squared is equal to 3. 
So that makes four, square the top and the bottom. All right, we were at this step similar to this on a previous problem. We need to get rid of that fraction. So I'm going to multiply the whole thing by y squared. So here it'll cancel out. 4. Here, the y squared times y squared gives me a y to the fourth. And then that will be 3y squared. Okay, I need to get this thing. Even though it's a fourth power, I'm still attacking it like it's a quadratic. I need to get set equal to zero, so I'm going to have y to the fourth plus 3y squared minus 4 is equal to zero. This does factor, but it's not going to factor as y times y because that's a y to the fourth. It'll have to be a y squared and a y squared. And then my factors of negative 4 that I add to 3 are positive 4 and negative 1. So now I'll take those factors and set them equal to 0. y squared plus 4 equals 0. Subtract my 4. y squared equals negative 4. And am I squared by square rooting? What's the square root of 4? Negative 4, I mean. What's the square root of negative 4? 2i. 2i. Very good. Because it's got a negative, so we got plus or minus that barely got us there, and then the 2i. Now this other factor, y squared minus 1 equals 0. Add your 1, you get y squared, it's 1, I did the square by square rooting, so there we get plus or minus 1. Okay, so we've got four y's, 2i, negative 2i, 1, negative 1. We've got to plug those in now to find the x's that go with them. Right here at the top of the page, I've got one that's already solved for x, so that's where I'm going to plug into, where I just highlighted right there. Okay, so if I plug... Scoot that up. X equals 2 over Y. If I plug my 2I in there, X equals 2 over 2I, that would just be 1 over I, right? So I've got 2I comma 1 over I. Now I've got to plug my negative 2I in, so that just makes it 2 over negative 2i makes it a negative 1 over i. And I gotta plug my 1 in. So 2 over 1 is the 2. And then I gotta plug my negative 1 in. So 2 over negative 1 gets me negative 2. So those are the four answers. Alright. Alright, I told you last week and I'm still planning on this. I'm just not sure if it's all going to get, get carried out or not. But I, I am planning on doing the test on Thursday. A little bit of the dilemma that I'm running into is the other Algebra 3 class is 6th period. And the original, the only um, interference that that gave was the talent show we leave at the very end of 6th period on Thursday. But I told them we would just take the test anyway because they usually don't take the whole period. But now I also got news this morning that Jostens is coming Thursday. Mm -hmm. And if they come during the front of 6th period, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know if I'm going to let y'all go ahead and take the test and them be a couple days behind. I haven't decided on that yet. I'm hoping that Jocelyn's you know be here that? like fifth we period. Have a free day. Yeah, I'm filling the coloring pages. Maybe a movie. I'm hoping Jocelyn's will be here fifth period and it'll all work out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So we're going to study guides tomorrow regardless. Yep. Yep.